and we'll read again. Amen. Brand new scripture tonight. Amen. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and call, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to read two more places. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Amen. This is prophecy about the end time. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, and this will uh, conclude our reading tonight. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For ye see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. And the reason is in verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I wish you'd notice from the book of Daniel that uh, the people that do know their God, that's it. The people that do know their God shall be strong and shall and do exploits. Amen. What's the requirement? Only one. The people that do know their God. And I would like to preach to you tonight about how you need to know God. What you need to know about God and the effect it needs to have on you that you might be strong in these last days. Amen. And not only be strong but do exploits for God. That's the unusual. Amen. Out of the ordinary. And I'm not here to preach anything over your head. I will not. I refuse to. It'll all be in your reach. Amen. I really believe that you need to place the feed trough where the lambs can reach it. Right. And the giraffes won't have no trouble. But if you place it where only the giraffes can, can e- reach it, yeah. you will starve the sheep, plumb to death. Amen. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. 
And I just pray when I get through preaching here tonight, the smallest child can tell you what I preached about. Amen. Amen. How do we know our God? What must we know about him? Do I need to get me a bigger dictionary? Do I need to get me a, a Greek New Testament? I've got one, but I can't do much with it. See, I'm not a Greek. It is, it is, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What? How do I need to know God? Well, now, God has chosen the foolish things. And that don't mean somebody that talks a bunch of nonsense. Amen. It means somebody that their talk and their thoughts and their lifestyle is so much like the Lord till this world feels like they've gone off the deep end. Amen. Is that all right? Huh? Foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God chose the weak things. Amen. Of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Do you remember scripture that Sanballat and Tobias said, What will these feeble Jews do? Do you remember that? <laughs> I tell you what, if the devil knows that a man of God's coming, he'll have such artillery rolled out, he'll try to scare him off before he gets there. Right. But if he looks you over and decides you're such a puny little thing, there ain't no use to worry about it. Praise God, you'll get a shot at him. Amen. Yeah. And God would like to slip you right in under his nose so you right. can get a good shot at Goliath. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Weak things, amen. That's little David, isn't it? Amen. To confound the things that are mighty, that's Goliath, isn't it? Amen. Amen, Brother Crawford. And base things, amen. And things which are despised hath God chosen. And things that are not. Now that last one's a a running it plumb into the ground. Oh, Amen. Oh, Things that are not. Oh, I wish I could preach that to you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, many years ago, when I was seeking God as good as I knew how. Amen. For the faith was delivered of the saints. The Lord told me, if I'm to use you in the last days. You'll have to be among the things that are despised. And that At that time, I thought, well, I could be despised to the world, but I don't see how that could ever happen to me. And I searched my heart. I've, I've lived as good as I know, and I don't know why folks would despise me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But nevertheless, he said, you'll have to pass through that yeah. on the way yonder. Yeah. You must pass through that. Amen. Glory, and things which are not. Well. Oh Lord, if if you don't if you don't cause this trial to let up soon, there ain't gonna be nothing left. That's where He wants us. <laughs> things that are not. I love you, and I know I may be speaking Greek right now to some <laughs> of you. Amen. Praise God. Don't sound right, does it? Amen. Well, it is. To bring to know things that are. I'd like to tell you that in my earnestly contending for the faith, and, uh, and uh, I need to tell you that I am not seeking the position of a divine healer. I am not seeking that position of a great preacher. Uh, uh, all I want to do is help restore the faith. That is once delivered to the saints. And as far as healing, God has given me some wonderful miracles in my meetings. But I'd rather for the folks to get healed with your prayers than mine. When the meeting gets to rolling just right, 
The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. It didn't just say the preacher. Right. I'd rather preach to build your faith in a way <laughs> that you'd get up in the morning after, after shouting hallelujah part of the night and snoring glory the rest of the night. You'd get up and call your children in that's been sick and pray for them and God would heal them. I'd rather for it to be that way. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Everybody I know that really got saved, God answered their prayers on the line of divine healing at least twice. Amen. Amen. From there on, it's for you to work it out. Amen. 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 So that's what I'm wanting. Amen. I'm wanting to build your faith till you, till you go home and in the morning you get up and at the breakfast table you tell your family, you know you prayed for me a lot of times and I ain't never been healed, but I believe if right around this table y'all pray for me, God will heal me this morning. And I wish you'd shout till you turn the table over. Amen. It'd be worth it. 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 Amen. Well, and uh, I have prayed a lot. I said, Lord, don't give me this unless you promise first to keep me. Amen. About every preacher that God blesses his ministry till things are done that are visible for the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, the flesh gets to glory. Yes. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And the flesh likes money. <laughs> and I'd be ashamed to tell you everything else flesh wants, but uh, amen. And there they go. And you know that's right. You know that's right. God help me. Right. So the Lord's running it a little running a little tighter ship. Yes. Now. Amen. He running a little tighter ship. And he said, Look, listen that Rim McCormick. You want to uh, you want to be one of the chosen of God? You be, you want to be a leader in the last day move? To bring Jesus Christ back, you want to present him to the world in such glory and the brightness of his presence until after a while his, his glory is seen in the sky and the cloud returns that he went away on and he comes again. Amen. Come on. Well, if you do, you must be among the foolish things. Amen. And the weak things. Well, and the base things. And those things which are despised. And you must end up capped off in the stack that are of them that are not. Amen. Well, 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 well. Now let me preach, if you would. Amen. Do you know Simon Peter's first response when he first met the Lord? Amen. They were over on the Sea of Galilee. Right. He loaned the master his ship his to use it as a pulpit. Mm -hmm. When he got through, he said, the Lord said, launch out in the deep. Uh, praise God for a drought. And they let down their nets and enclosed so much uh, fish till they had to call for James and John with a, another ship, Luke 5 and, and right. 7 and 8. To come and help them. Right. Now wouldn't you like. How would you like. For God to give us such a meeting today. Till we had to have somebody else. To come over and help us baptize the folks. Amen. Come over. We, we need some help around the altar. We need somebody. That every person that comes to seek God. Somebody. And it would help if there's two somebodies. That latch on to them. And stay with them. Praise God. Till they come out of victory. Hey partners. Come over and help us. Amen. And they came and filled both ships. So that they began to sink. They didn't. But they started to. About to go to dip in water here. Glory to God. 
Somebody said you sound like a charismatic. I may do it. Amen. Praise God. And these fellas kind of sounds like them right here. Amen. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell at his feet. Praise God. No, I was reading the wrong line. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Oh, you say, yeah, yeah, he is that rough old fisherman. Well, if this don't get you, we'll read about some more. But when you come in presence of God the Father or the Son or the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to stand up and look bold or smart or intelligent. Amen. Come on. If you do, you don't know whose presence you're in. You're not aware of it yet. And uh, Simon Peter fell down right at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. You don't need to run around with fellows like me. Amen. It will defile your presence to be around somebody like me. I don't think he was that bad myself, but I think Jesus was that good. It wasn't him being so bad. It was Jesus being so good. Help me, please. I need to say that 50 times. It wasn't that he is so bad. It is Jesus was so good. Till nothing would explain how good he was. Only say, you better move out of my presence. Because I'm a sinful man. Amen. Well, if you think he is just a roughneck, let's try the next one. John, John the beloved disciple, John the revelator, amen, in Revelations 1 and 17, when he saw the glorified Christ, amen, he was there when he died on the cross, you know, amen. He was there in the garden. All the disciples forsook him, but John, come on, he leaned his head on Jesus' breast at the supper table. But on the Isle of Patmos, he met the glorified Christ. Amen. And he used several verses describing him. Amen. And then he said in the 17th verse, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Now listen, this was before Simon Peter was converted, but this is after, as far as I know, they had already boiled John in a pot of oil. Amen. And he sat there and grinned at him. Amen. Praise God. They couldn't boil him, so they put him on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, get your paper out and, and write down what you see in here and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia. And there wasn't a mailbox or a post office on the whole island. You hear me? But John was such a man of God. He just went to writing and he wrote it all down. Time he got it all wrote and gathered his manuscript up, there was a ship come back after him. He was the first one and the last one. The only one that has ever retrieved from the Isle of Patmos. And I tell you, he was no second-rate apostle. Amen. Hallelujah. He was the chiefest of the apostles. Stood right by the side of Sam and Peter. And he said, but when I saw him. Amen. In his raiment, he described it. In his girl, he described it. He described his eyes. He described his hair. He set up for his feet as one dead. Amen. These brothers knew him. Amen. Well, it's quiet. Amen. In the book of Daniel. Amen. Daniel, when he was left alone to see a great vision. There remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Oh, I wish I could preach. 
How much is corruption worth? Come on, talk to me. Don't, uh, don't uh, say gross and, and look off. But how much is corruption worth? Is that getting down there pretty close to things that are not? Amen. Amen. Come on. Well, I know it's cold outside and there ain't many of us here. But since we're already here, we just might as well have church. Amen. And if you think this Daniel, praise God, was a bad fella of any kind, I want to tell you he was greatly beloved of his God. Amen. He had an excellent spirit. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. He could, uh, uh, he could interpret dreams. Amen. Praise God. He could solve hard sentences. He could even dissolve doubts. But he said, say, you don't know what kind of vision I saw. When I saw this vision, it took all the strength out of me. And my comeliness, that's what's pleasant and beautiful and wonderful in me, was turned right within me into corruption. And brother, listen, the farther I go with God, amen, the more I can see, amen, and I'm ready tonight to confess to you, I claim to be as corrupt as Daniel, amen, amen, you talk about rolling out the red carpet for a preacher, if you felt like Daniel did, he'd say, hmm, I better not walk on that. Amen. It sure is quiet. I've read the Bible through a few times, and I've never found where anybody strutted in the presence of God. No place where people stood up proud and high-minded in the presence of God. Help me while I preach. Amen. I read about kings that didn't even see his face, but just the fingers of his hand rolled over on the plaster by the candlestick. Amen. And their loins came unjointed and their knees smote one against another. I'm talking about a king that had a thousand lords and his concubines and drinking. Amen. In a wild party out of gold and vessels that come from the, come from the house of God. But when the fingers begin to write, Amen. He couldn't stand up to that. He he didn't have a class to put it in. He didn't know what to do with it. That's something else. Amen. Amen. And neither the man of God nor his mother was at the party. Come on. I tell you, if you go to having a party that neither the man of God nor your mother attends, it would be best to not have that party. But they call for his mommy. He's big enough while I go. But when those fingers begin to write... Every little boy wants his mommy. Amen. They call for his mommy. He come in. She come in. Looked the situation over and said, Don't be afraid. There's a man in your kingdom that can read that writing. He knows that God. Help me while I preach. He knows that God. He can read it. Well, they said, Call for him. Oh, I don't have time to preach everything about this. But Daniel knew. Is God. Everything good on the inside of him had turned to corruption. And us Pentecostal preachers, I reckon, would vote 98 to 2 that he is backslid. Come on. How you feel, Daniel? <laughs> Don't feel too good. Tell us how you feel. If you feel like this, don't you tell <coughs> a bunch of folks. Because if you even look a little bit sad, they'll preach you a sermon about they don't believe you have to have a face long as a mule. Amen. 
and prove for sure that you don't have the blessing if you can't smile all the time. When my Jesus was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. You, you cannot show me where he ever laughed in the Bible. He rejoiced in the Spirit. I can show you where he wept. Amen. Well, I know I'm out of step, but am I right? That's the question. You say, Brother Havis, you won't be popular. Thank you. That's not what I'm headed for. I'd like to be right. And I'd like to know my God. Even if it turns all the good feelings about me on the inside into reverse. And every feeling on the inside of me tells me, Havis, you ain't worth a dime. You rotten, sorry, low-down pile of flesh. Amen. Come on, help me. Help me. I don't want to feel that way in front of the devil, and I don't want to feel that way before other flesh. But when I get along with God, amen, I can't stand up to him. I beg your pardon, but I can't stand up to him. I've never been able to. And the more I know about him, the lower I get. Amen. The less I think of myself. Amen. And the more I think of him, till I hope the day comes, I'll completely fade out. Praise God. And he'll be in boxcar letters so this world can see who's really living. Lord. Amen. I've got to hurry. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't guarantee you my, my preaching will be pleasant, but if you'll take this, it'll change your life. Amen. I don't care if you're as good as Daniel. Amen. To me, he's the best. Amen. When the Lord spoke about three men that that couldn't deliver neither son or daughter by their own righteousness? Did he not name Noah, Daniel, and Job? Named them three times. Here you've got one of the very best on heaven's roll. And when he saw this great vision that Gabriel brought to him, he said, My comeliness was turned within me to corruption. It made me want to vomit up myself. And I was sick certain days. What was he sick on, Daniel? <laughs> sick on Daniel. Amen. Well, you say I can't stand much more of you, you Brother Havis. I don't blame you. I can't either. Amen. I felt that away for I left Virginia. And I pray God would help you good folks. Amen. And you know I believe he has. Amen. I believe, I believe he's helped you. Well, I must hurry. Uh, praise God, Cash. I'm glad you're here. Hey, amen. Praise God. Isaiah, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, come on, let me preach. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, he said, Woe is me. Isaiah, you hypocrite. Huh? Huh? No, no, not that kind. Hey, amen. He had been called to preach. God had been with him. He was a friend of kings, uh, a good king. God had done had his hand on him. Already anointed him. But when I saw him, I lifted up. You don't know what I saw. You don't know what condition he was in. When I saw him, you don't know how high he was. And you don't know how far his train reached. And when I saw him, I said, Whoa, is me. For I'm undone. Hey, but you know what? I'm I'm undone. I'm not, praise God, I'm like these little boys' uh, tennis shoes. Praise God, when they have long strings and they leave them plumb loose and the flopping, I'm undone. Yes. Hey, man, I can't get myself up. I, I've come apart. And, hey, man, I'm just, I'm just a mess and just sloppy as you've ever seen. Come on. You may think you're pretty tight and, and pretty neat. 
until you meet uh, the God that's high and lifted up. There will be no flesh glory in his presence. We wish as well to not go to the world if we have a little Jesus in a box uh, and we can turn him off and on and make him do little tricks. Amen. We wish well to not go. They've got enough of that stuff anyway. We need a Jesus that made us fall on our face. That said you'd be better off out of my presence. Don't stay around me till you get like me. If you can help me be like you, fine. But don't you take on the likeness of me. Let me preach to you. And the Jesus is in the world today. You take a good Baptist preacher and he can preach his Jesus till he looks like a Baptist Jesus. You take a good Pentecostal preacher and he can preach his Jesus till you don't know for sure he wore a guitar around his neck. Amen. The Catholics, you may have not have never heard one preach that can, but when they get to with Jesus, praise God, he's telling you, don't talk to me, talk to Mary. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, come on. Would the real Jesus please stand up? If I say that too lightly, when he stands up, I'll go down. I'm not talking about lost. I'm talking about collapse. Amen. But wouldn't you like for Jesus to come in the service tonight in such a way till we had all collapse? Oh, God. I just pray the Lord would give us one of them old time Methodist meetings where people fell in trances, hauled them home in a wagon over a rough road and their head just bumped as they went along. Didn't know anything for two or three days. Oh God, God, would you do it again? He said he wouldn't. Well, it sure is quiet now. And I love you. Amen. Amen. But come through two or three days, come to two or three days later and tell you about some of the most wonderful things they saw. Praise God to live and make the hair stand up on your head. Amen. Come on. It sure is quiet. Maybe I've, maybe I've said the wrong thing. Maybe I'm supposed to exalt flesh. I'm afraid to pump it up much. Afraid it'll bust. You say burst, no, not burst, bust, amen. I said it right, bust, amen. <laughs> oh, but Jesus, he don't have a fitting on him to pump him up. He's already up. He stands above it all. He stands above Gabriel and Michael and, oh, what am I preaching? Amen. Isaiah. Saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the earth. And he said, Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I, I'm a man of unclean lips, and dwell among the midst of a people of unclean lips. And for I've seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Let me say right there, some people think he told smutty jokes, and everybody else did. That ain't what that's a saying at all. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Listen, everybody I know that really got saved, amen, they either said it or felt it. Why didn't somebody tell me it is this way? I've had folks to actually get after me. Brother Habas, why didn't you tell me it is this way? I said, I tried to. They look so surprised. Is this what you was trying to tell me? And I could tell by the twinkle in their eye, Brother Havis, you didn't do it right. You just wait till I go tell them. Go tell them, brother. Go tell them. You'll get a few of them. Amen. I've never known of a time yet that when the redeemed said so, somebody didn't heed them. But you ain't going to bring them in by the droves, I don't think. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, why? We're a people of unclean lips as far as heaven's concerned. We saw, we saw the unsearchable. We discovered the unspeakable. Amen. Amen. If you get close enough, you'll be caught up and you'll... Hey, 
to hear things that's unlawful for man to utter. Now, tell that me. Brother, I know something. If I could tell, hey, man, it would bring a revival. Oh, the pews would be full tomorrow night. It don't make no difference if the weather is bad. But I can't tell it. And it's only told when heaven's good, the Holy Ghost moves upon people with a coal of fire on their lips. And I kind of need that don't last only known. You must come back and get a fresh anointing. Amen. What am I preaching? Lord, can you use an undone fellow? If you can, well, Isaiah. Can you use a man that everything beautiful in him is turned into corruption? Daniel's your man. Amen. Can you use one that when he saw you, he fell at his feet? John the Revelator's the one you need. Amen. Can you use an old boy that said, Lord, you shouldn't run with folks like me? Simon Peter's your man. Oh, I wish God would give us a revival here. Praise God and bring some apostles out of it and some prophets. Hallelujah. Amen. Some evangelists and pastors and, and teachers. Amen. Amen. Where am I at? Amen. Hallelujah. Job long for the Lord. And I know you've heard everything preached about Job just like you have Jesus. Amen. When some folks, when some preachers get through with Job, he ain't worth much. That's right. Amen. But I read before he started, he is a perfect and upright man. God said it. Amen. God even told the devil that. Come on. Now again, I may not be pe- uh, uh, preaching popular, but am I preaching right? right. Is that what it said? I don't want to change that to fit my ideas. I want to change my ideas to fit that. Then I want to preach it to you. Hey, Amen. Until you change yours to fit that. Hey, Amen. If you say you want to force your ideas upon it, thank you. That ain't mine. I've done told mine away. Hey, Amen. Job was a perfect man. Amen. Hallelujah. And he didn't know the conversation that went on between God and the devil. Us today, we make fun of him because, many folks do, because he didn't do no better than he did. But you see, we read the whole story. He didn't know what happened. He said he moved against me without a cause. And how would you feel if you felt that way about God? Somebody said, I do, yeah, but he had a cause too. God didn't even reprove him for feeling that way. In fact, God joined in, read it, and says, have you considered my servant Job this the second time around? There's none like him in all the earth. He fears God and eschews evil, and he retains his integrity, though you move me against him without a cause. Help me preach. Yeah. Right. Amen. Be careful what you say about Job. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. When it was all over with, God told his three friends how Job to pray for you. You've not spoken all together that which is right concerning me as my servant Job has. God put his approval on every word Job said right there. Amen. But wait a minute. One day Job felt as lonely as y'all have. He was as much flesh as you are. And maybe more because he had boils all over his. Amen. Amen. None of his brothers had come to see him or his sisters his near kinsman had three friends come and they used their time trying to help him see that he was a hypocrite. Amen. Amen, Brother Crawford. I'm going to have to walk around. This is getting too good to stand here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we could realize the people in the Bible were humans just like we are, had feelings like yours, and the only difference, they come in the presence of a great God and realized whose presence they was in. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God tells you you're his very own, he shouldn't have to pet you up every day. You are to believe that. Amen. You are to stand on that. Let me tell you all something. There's folks right here in this meeting. Hey, we prayed for you and the power of God swept through here. And I'm not scolding you, but I tell you the devil. Amen. We'll get your faith so frazzled. Amen. That you can pray for the Lord to come and heal you and him come to heal you. And you have finally end up by saying, come back, Lord, sometime and heal me. Amen. I think he felt like I did when a fellow sent me word to come preach his revival when I didn't have much place to preach. And I used my last money and drove 300 miles to get there. And he met me back in the aisle and shook hands with me and said, Brother Havis, we're so glad you come. Come back and preach us a revival sometime. Bless your heart. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, thank you for the little touch. I wish you'd come back and heal me sometime. <laughs> How many times do you think the immortal, invisible God has to touch you to heal you? Glory, glory, that's humans. I'm a preaching too long already, but uh, you remember Manoah. Uh, that's the reason every man needs a good wife. Manoah, the angel of the Lord, spoke to him and said, Your wife's going to bear you a son. He even told him how to take care of him. And, and he told his wife, said, Oh, we're going to die. said, We have saw the angel of the Lord. We're going to die. Both of us are going to die. She said, If the Lord, if it pleased him to kill us, would he have told us all these things? <laughs> Does that encourage you? Do you see your picture there? Amen. When I look at the human part of all of them that done good in the Bible, thank God I can see my picture there. Yeah. He come to give him a son and tell him how to, I praise God, how to take care of him. And he thought he'd come to kill him. Listen, the Holy Ghost didn't come to kill y'all when he moved over you. And let me tell you something, there's been people that's been healed of TB and cancer and sugar diabetes that didn't feel a bit more than you felt in this meeting. They just, they just, they just mixed it with faith. But they don't work good unless you mix it with faith. Pour in a good portion. If he said it, it's so. If he said it, I believe it. If he said it, it don't make no difference what the devil says. If he said it, it don't make no difference what the uh, theologian said. If he said it, it don't make no difference what the dictionary said. Hey, man, don't make no difference what the doctor said. Hey, don't make no difference what the x-ray said. You hear me? If he said it, let God be true. And let every man be a liar. Hey, then let his x-ray machine be a liar. Let his medicine be a liar. Let his diagnosis be a liar. Come on, help me. Please. Man, I, I may not be preaching... But I'm a trying. Sure. And I feel like preaching. Sure preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They that do know their God. Hey, wait a minute. Who told you that? Who'd you say told you that? God told me that. Well, if you ain't crazy, you just well to get ready to get well. You can't die in the presence of life. Hallelujah. This ain't no way. Yeah. You just well to shut your crying up and <laughs> shout a while. Hallelujah. 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 And there's a bunch of you. Amen. If you could get some comfort in your heart, in your mind, if you could get some assurance right down in here, come on, help me. And faith produces all of that. You could get well over your bodily elements, afflictions. Uh, did you know Brother Ross O'Neill back in Oklahoma? I don't guess you did. He was one of the sanest men you ever met. And a good preacher. Amen. His wife got sick and she got plumbed down. Amen. And, uh, and uh, she wasn't getting no better. 
they called the doctor, and the doctor come and examined her, and called Ross in the other room and said, Ross, I hate to tell you, but your wife's going to die. There ain't nothing wrong with her that'll kill her, but she's going to die. I said, uh, Doctor, can you tell me anything to do? Yeah, he said. Get her out of that bed. Work whatever you have to to get her out of that bed. Amen. Brother Dillard was the same way once. Amen. You know, when the devil afflicts your body, he'll also afflict your mind. And he'll tell you, God ain't going to heal you. You're unworthy. You're dirt. You're all these kind of things. Amen. God will do it for other folks, but he, he won't do it for you or he'll, the devil will tell you. He probably didn't do it for them. Amen. Amen. So the doctor went on. Ross went back in and sat down on the bed. Bless his heart. And he is praying for God to help him to say something to get Sister O'Neill out of that bed. Amen. He sat there on the side of the bed and she said, Ross, what did the doctor tell you? Well, he didn't say anything. She said, he told you I was going to die, didn't he? He said, yeah, that's what he said. She said, Ross, I've been thinking. Uh, I want you to pick you out some good taking care of my children. He said, I believe I could die better if I, if I could look at her and know who's going to be the mother to my children. And God helped Brother Ross O'Neill. And you may think he's mean, and you may not like him. Amen. But he said, that. Well, I said, I'll tell you. I've been thinking about that too. I said, I said, there's an old girl down the road here. She jumped out of that bed. Stand up. Stand up, brother. Jumped out of that bed and said, Ross O'Neill. I'll have you know, I'll live just as long as you do. <laughs> she pushed him across the room, and that thought she saw where she was. <laughs> I wish God had seen something to stir you up, to get you on your spiritual feet again, even if you get up to fight. Amen. Come on. One feeling I'd preach it. Being a bunch of y'all just probably about to give up, deciding you can't make it. God send something big and mighty along to stir you up and to realize that although you're just a human, you're as important as any other humans. And you may not, you may be undone, and you may be full of corruption, and you may cannot do nothing but fall at his feet. But I tell you, he'd like to choose some things. That are not to, to bring in all things that are. God's about to give us a revival. You hear me? And He needs some people to work in it. Amen. He needs some people that's foolish in their own eyes, so they won't be popping us full of a lot of bright ideas they've got. Amen. He needs some weak folks, so they won't say just call for me. Amen. They're telling you better call for Jesus. He's the one who keeps me going. Come on. And things that are despised. Ain't no use for me to go to that meeting and straighten them out. Don't nobody like me no way. Come on. And tell you the truth. I've about joined them. I don't think there's much to me anyway. You're getting about ready. You're getting about qualified. For the God that's strong enough for both of you. Brother Farmer, I don't reckon I ever met you before. But did you know God's strong enough for you and Him both? Do you know He's good enough for you and Him both? <laughs> did you know He's sweet enough for you and Him both? Did you know He has enough know it all for you and Him both? He is your wisdom. He is your righteousness. He is your sanctification. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Don't you know he's holy enough for both of you? Help me while I preach. He's righteous enough for every one of them. Amen. Ain't this a sight for us to feel this good on a cold night like this? Amen. 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 Oh, what I'm going to do, just like last night, I ain't going to get to the last part of this. Can't get there. Amen. You're needing what I'm preaching now too much for me to get to the last part. Oh, it wouldn't be daylight. Amen. If I told it all. <laughs> Faith. Jesus preaching to the disciples. If you think I, I preach strong, you are listening to him preach. When you got through that twelve hand picked ones, said Lord, increase our faith. Amen. Amen. I wish I could preach. Let me tell you, the Lord's hand's not short. Yours may be. And my may mine may be. But his hand's not short. But stretch out what you've got. If it's just a bone three inches long out of your elbow, stretch out what you got. I said stretch out what you got. If you will, he's able to meet it. He can meet it. And I want to tell you, all you need is a connection with God. Faith your connection. Use what you got and trust him. And you leave here saying tonight, when he reached down his hand for me, when he reached way down for me, oh, I guess you got a lot of faith. No, not necessarily. But the Lord saw my little old hand reaching up. And he reached way down. There's no reason why every one of y'all can't be healed in this service tonight. The people that do know their God, oh, I'm spending too much time. Glory be to God. Praise God. Who was I reading about? Amen. Well, I must be between some. No, I was talking about Job, wasn't I, when I quit? He said, I went forward and he wasn't there. I went backward and he wasn't there. I looked on my left hand and on my right hand. Huh? You remember me searching for him that way? And when he found him, praise God, you will find in the 40th chapter, in the 4th verse, Job said, Behold, I am thou. Thou. You say, I don't understand that. If you understood what he saw, you would understand. Bless your heart, I don't claim to be hot stuff. Amen. Would it be all right for me to tell you I claim to be as vile as Job, as corrupt as Daniel, as undone as Isaiah? Hallelujah. If the march wind blows, it'll blow me away. Oh, but there's a God that's big enough for both of us. Amen. 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 And in the 42nd chapter, he said, I heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. And he says, I abhor myself, and I repent in sackcloth and ashes. Somebody said, he is bad wrong. He wouldn't have to repent. Wait a minute. I can tell you, ain't, you don't know who he stood before. When you know who he stood before. I repented of my sins, Brother Hamburg, many years ago. I was 13 years old. Nailed at an altar and repented of my sin, everything I could think of. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of times since I knelt before him and said, Search me, Lord. If there's anything in there that shouldn't be, remove it and forgive me. But when I began to come in the presence of God Almighty, when I was seeking the faith once delivered to the saints, the last few months, I see, I tarried at home, and I don't mean to brag, but I tarried at home nine months before I come here to preach this meeting. 
I've got nine months of praying in this meeting. Amen. I've read, I've read thousands of scriptures getting ready for this meeting. You say 50 years ago? No, 1994. But when I come in His presence, it is better than I remembered it. It was more holy than I could remember. And I've repented and repented and repented. Amen. And repented. I've told Doc and Mary Helen, I said, I look back over my life and I can't see nothing I've done that couldn't have been better. Nothing I've ever done that wasn't marred by the flesh. And I pray, oh God, forgive me. As long as I'm me, I'll still be doing it wrong and backwards and making mistakes. Amen. Amen. But somewhere or another, on Tuesday morning after Thanksgiving, the Lord called me with the sweetest, deepest, penetrating voice I've heard, praise God, since 50 years ago when He called me to preach and told me to call Brother Collins and tell him I'm ready to come. You say, why didn't you come any sooner? I didn't know what it took to help you or me the one. Amen. I say, oh, help me preach. You say, you backslid. I don't reckon I was. But I sure, I sure feel different now. Amen. Oh, I wished I could preach. If I could preach like I'm supposed to, Brother Coffey, your life wouldn't ever be the same, Brother. Oh, oh every time you picked up the Bible, it would mean more to you. Every time you read it, it would sink to the bottom of your heart. You'd look at every cloud and wonder if Jesus was riding the backside of it. Amen. You'd see your brothers for what they could be with this good blessing. Oh, I'm feeling like preaching. Listen, God's fixing to give us revival, and He needs some workers. And will you please listen at the requirements and see, amen, if you could qualify, amen, they must be foolish, I must say, in their own eyes. We got a bunch of folks that's foolish in everybody else's eyes but theirs, amen. Let other folks count you as wise as you, as they will, but you know you. If you know God, you know yourself, amen, amen. And you know you're the weakest one. And you know you're base. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. Come on. I'm not running you down. I'm just telling you what great men saw. And how the repercussions it had within them. Job said, I look far and forward, backward on each side. Said, when he's tried me, I'll come forth as gold. If God will permit me, I'll get a little of that after a while. But when he saw him, he said, I'm vile. And then he said, I took another look and said, I'll bar myself. Oh. And then he said, I repent. What have I don't know, but I repent. I'm sorry, ain't no better than I was. Amen. <laughs> God help us that would heal all the church trouble in the world that would heal the trouble between the Arabs and the Jews you hear me that would stop all racial strife if we could just get a glimpse of him I'm praying for revival that Jesus will get so great till you won't even know who's kneeling by you all you'll know you're kneeling at his feet amen and it won't make any difference who's kneeling by you if it's your worst enemy. When you, when you stay at his feet a while, you, you look up and see your enemy kneeling there. You'll tell him, I'm so glad you found this place. <laughs> I don't have any authority to welcome you here, but as far as I'm concerned, you're welcome. I'm so glad you found it. Listen, brother. 
If you ever see him like he is, it'll produce a good will in your heart towards everybody. Everybody. Come on to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I need to get a little more. Amen. Abraham said when he was making intercessions for his nephew Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I take it on myself to speak to my Lord, who am but dust and ashes. Amen. I'll relate to you a little incident in my own life. Come on. I remember four years ago when I had been through the furnace of affliction. And when I met the Lord after coming through that furnace, He told me, He said, Havis, I don't believe we can get the dross out of you. He said, The bellows are burned. The lead's melted. We've melted the burns out in the blower. And you ain't come free of dross yet. I said, oh God, don't throw me away. Is there anything else you can do? He said, I have one more crew. If you're willing for them to run the furnace and the blower, they can do it. I said, Sin for him. He said, I won't have to sin for him. All I have to do is leave, hide my face. They'll come. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. That night he walked away from me. Amen. Demon powers come. They grab the blower. They say, yeah, we'll turn it. We'll burn you up. Mm-hmm. Amen. We can get the dross out of you. We can get everything out of you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Cash Amberg, praise God. You believe in what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after a few rounds, I said, Oh, God. If you don't... If you don't call a halt soon, there ain't going to be nothing left. And about that time, God moved on somebody across the country. My telephone rang and they said, Brother Havis, we, we felt like you might need this scripture. Yeah, when he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And I thought then it said I shall come forth pure gold. I mean, with them quoting it and me reading it, I thought it said pure gold, but it says as gold. That encouraged me, and we went a few more rounds and a few more days. And the fire got hotter. They uh, shoveled the fuel in and turned the bellows faster. I said, Oh God, if you don't do something pretty soon, there ain't going to be nothing left of me. Oh, go up in the smoke. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You may not like for me to stay this long here, but I'm just taking a few minutes to tell you what went on for weeks. Amen. Amen. And I never did get no help. I stayed in there until I burned up. There wasn't nothing else in me burn. And when there wasn't nothing else in me burn, the devil lost interest. And I thought I was right. And I thought I was right. And I said, I can't never be like Job. Ain't no gold left. And then the Lord gave me this Abraham. He claimed to be dust and ashes. You ought to have been there when the Lord gave me that. Amen. I said, well, ashes is like gold. Gold won't burn and ashes won't either. If you pick up a shovel full of ashes and say, I'm going to throw you in the fire. So what? (laughs) 
Who cares? <laughs> and then I thought, oh, I need to look this up. And I run ashes through in my little computer, and then I run dust through in my little computer. And I found that they scraped dust out of a house that had leprosy and carried the dust without the city to an unclean place. And I found the ashes of the altar. They also carried them out, but they dumped them in a clean place. <laughs> and I said, Lord, which way am I going? Well, he said, it depends on who you belong to. <laughs> if the devil gets you, he'll put you in an unclean place. If I carry you out, I'll put you in a clean place. I said, oh God. I said, if I can't come forth as Job, would you let me turn out like Abraham? Amen. Dust and ashes. Oh, bless your heart. Lord, can you use dust? Did he use Abraham? Is there anybody here that wasn't blessed by faithful Abraham? To Abraham and to his seed as of one, the Bible said. Not as of many, but as of one. His seed, even Christ, was a promise is made. And this man who claims to be dust and ashes become the father of faith. Oh, bless your heart. And I ain't through preaching. And if the Lord sent a little half a teacup full of ashes up here to preach to y'all, there's no telling what he's liable to do. Because he Praise God, ashes can't glory in His presence. Amen. Ashes can't glory in His presence. Amen. If any man glory, let him glory in the Lord. If any one of y'all gets help while I'm here, he'll be the Lord that does it. I believe I'm about through <laughs> for tonight. Amen. Amen. Who do you choose, Lord? I believe I'll take that little cup of ashes over there. Amen. Amen. And I believe I'll take this undone fella here. And I believe that'll take that fella over there that all of his beauty turned into corruption. And I believe I'll take this other one over here that can't even stand up when my glory comes. Amen. And I'll take that other uh, that said, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. Oh, God, uh, if we didn't think so much of ourselves, we could only exalt Christ. Hallelujah. What do you want to be healed for? To do your own thing? Or do you want to be healed to do the service? of God. Amen. If any man ask you, why loose you the cold? Tell him the master has need of it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God would be willing to invest eternal treasures in you and me. Praise God. If we could realize we wasn't anything and we could use it to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Well, I believe I better quit. I preached one page, and and, uh, and I got four more. Amen. Well, you say, why didn't you preach it all? Don't take much for half a teacup full of ashes. Amen. Oh, I can't hardly quit you. Because I love you. But I hear a centurion say, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But if you'll just, if you'll just, if you'll just speak, speak the word, not even words, words. Legion of men that had so many devils in him he couldn't stay home, couldn't wear no clothes, cut himself. Amen. Cried, lived in the tombs. Jesus said one word and set him free. One two letter word. Go. <laughs> it ain't what he said, it's who's doing the talking. And the people that know him in this last day will be strong. And do exploits. (laughs) 
I know it's wisdom for me to quit, but you don't know how I've worked to get it to this sweet place where it is right now. Amen. Amen. Do you reckon if I'd squeeze it one more time, there'd be another drop of honey come out? If I knew it would fall on you, I'd squeeze it. Amen. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Why don't you go to singing, in spite of my doubts, I will believe. In spite of my doubts, I will believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, everyone. Brother Collins, would you 